Hello guys and girls, my name is Braden. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Rocky Vlogs. As you can probably hear, I don't sound very good. I'm pretty stuffed up still. Uh, over the past couple days I've been getting over a cold or the flu, I don't know. A lot of you know I work from home. It takes a lot for me to actually burn a sick day and uh, not want to work and just stay in bed all day. And that's what I did the past couple of days, so I was not feeling phenomenal. But good enough today that I figured we would get to work on this. You guys have already seen me fiberglass this airframe and the coupler for this rocket, but this is a BSD Horizon, a five and a half inch one. If you aren't familiar with that name, you're probably familiar with SBR at the very least in modern rocketry, and that is basically the same thing. I won this at a Tripoli Idaho launch. They did a raffle with the money going back to the club. There's a bunch of stuff that was donated by a former member, and I ended up winning this awesome five and a half inch rocket with a 75 millimeter mount. And that 75 millimeter mount, along with the fact that tube is long enough to fit a 6400 case, is the reason uh, we glassed everything. It'll fit a five grain, and there's some pretty aggressive M motors and L motors that'll fit five and down. So I figured we'd glass it. We're going to glass the fins as well. Interestingly enough though, um, I didn't prepare this intro at all. I didn't even really want to talk. I still don't really want to. The fin tabs are oddly long enough for like a five and a half inch rocket with a 29 millimeter mount. So I 3D printed some guides so I can build the fin assembly outside of the rocket. These fit over the motor tube and uh, we were gonna do that today until I realized that the tabs were like an inch and a half too long. So now instead I'm going to measure those and trim them up with a jigsaw, probably sand them smooth and uh, might try sanding a bit of a bevel into them with my belt sander. We'll see how I'm feeling. I also got my DA sander back so I kinda wanna try and sand the upper airframe tube and see how smooth everything comes out. Sorry I haven't posted for the past couple weeks. I've been sick and then not home. I was in San Francisco. So I realized the leading edge sits about a quarter inch lower from the point that the fin taper starts than the trailing edge. So that's why you can see the original line when I measured them both from there where I thought was where we go in the tube made a crooked line. So this is why you always measure twice or more, as many times as it takes in this case, because this is still flat, which means when it's in the rocket, this the leading edge will be sunk in by a quarter inch. I don't really know why, but uh, so I subtracted that quarter inch and then redrew the lines. You can see now that we have an actual straight one up there, and now we're going to cut them. I'm going to do tip to tip glass over the motor tube because I, if you guys remember, I broke a fin off my seven and a half inch lock iris and all it did would, was take the fillet, <laughs> all it did was take the fillet from both inside and out, the internal and external fillet and just rip a little layer of cardboard off, take it with it. So 
I think my ideal solution from now on with fiberglass or with cardboard rockets is to reinforce the joint to the motor tube with fiberglass. And I know um, some people might be quick to point out here that I didn't peel the glassine layer on this and put that uh, down for the reason of cause. The iris's tube was peeled, so didn't make a difference. All it did was take another layer of cardboard off with it. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do, I'll probably do two full layers because for whatever reason, this five and a half inch kit with a 75 millimeter motor mount. Look, I love cardboard and wood rockets, but this is optimistic. It came with 3 16th inch fins. I thought they were quarter, but they're 3 16th. And there's just no, no way that that is feasible to have a 75 unless you're going to only fly maybe an M650, <laughs> but I don't want to. I have an L1944 already. An M3100 would be awesome. Uh, you know, M1850, if that case will fit, would be awesome. So yeah, this thing's gonna fly fast. So I'm gonna do probably two full layers of six ounce, or I might get my nine and a half ounce back from Taylor, and do nine and a half, and then do six on top of that. Um, either way, it's gonna be plenty stout, but you know, it's it weighs nothing, so it's still gonna be pretty dang light. Um, if the old little John is of any insight, this thing's going to be super light, and it is going to boogie on spicy motors. Several days later. All right, sorry to leave you guys in the dark, but I did some fillets, internal fillets against the motor tube. So now we're going to start fiberglassing, and then that's probably where I'm going to end this video because then it's going to land on, uh, well, we still have to slot the airframe and get this stuff all in there, but I haven't posted on the channel for a while, as you guys are probably aware. So I figured I would get this up. We'll do sort of a build part one for this rocket. And um, I'm just gonna do the one set, you guys can watch along with that, and then I will do the other two sets off camera. You guys have seen me do tip to tip before. So, once that's all cured and I get the glass all trimmed and everything, and it's time to put it in the actual rocket itself, I'll bring you guys back into the equation and we can do some finishing work. I have some stuff I need to finish up on the Little John as well that'll just be, I might do a live stream for that. It's really just putting the retainer on and then I have a couple big rocket sleds to build. So uh, that'll be fun. I know a lot of people are curious about my electronic setups. I've covered it in the past, but it's not gonna hurt to cover it again. And I'm probably going to make one sled that'll fit the Honest John, that six inch Red Max, and that six inch Ultimate Dark Star back there. And I'll probably salvage the electronics out of my Mad Dog up there. And then I have to make a new electronics bay for my 5-inch Punisher. Since uh, the, it shared this sled with the 4-inch Punisher, which is now buried in the desert in Idaho. Rest in peace. But uh, I'm now driving to Argonia for Cloudburst. Myself and my cousin Shane are driving down there. We are indeed flying the 12-inch Punisher again. And... Uh, if you know what motor I ordered, you already know, and you get to be in the little loop, if you will. But for now, I'm just going to tell you, I'm flying the 5-inch Punisher again, and it is getting its first 98mm motor. So, let's do this whole thing. For 3-fin rackets, I like to uh, take just a regular box like this, you get a pretty tall one, and then we cut a little slot for the fin, and that way uh, you cut it just like the you know, just slid it down the box and then you can wedge the fin in there and it holds everything all nice and in place for you. So I'm going to find something sharp to do that with. Serrated blade, but it'll do the trick. There you go, that's about all you need. Doesn't even need to be a straight cut as I just perfectly demonstrated. And there you go, you got yourself a nice rocket holder box. And then if you're gonna, things are gonna get heavy, I'll usually throw some tape over this edge or whatever, but uh, there you go. All right, I know you see that epoxy check texture there, but it's within the centering rings, so doesn't matter. We're just gonna throw some fiberglass right over it. And eight inches wide will do the trick. Now, I'm hoping, I can't remember how wide the Mylar is, but it looks like it's more than 16 inches, which is awesome. It's 
20 inches. So I can take a piece of mylar and then cut two pieces out of it. Well, actually, that's perfect. I'll just cut eight inch pieces of mylar too. Wow. For some reason in my head, the fin span was too big to use the mylar that way, but it's not. So that's how we're gonna do it. So let's get some fiberglass out. This is where buying very wide fiberglass is almost a nuisance, but I actually think that's gonna be pretty much perfect. Let's see if I can get a rough reading on. Fin span across the motor tube. Just have to make sure it's the right width and at least the middle. We can get that between the two rings. That is beautiful. That should do nicely. Okay, we want a little excess, but not not this much. Okay. Now, get some mylar out. Do a little test fit there. Looks pretty good. All right. That was definitely the first take. If you need chip brushes, there's a killer deal on them in the description. They're about 40 cents a piece on Amazon when you buy 96 of them. And yeah, that's maybe a little bit overkill, but you never know. It doesn't hurt to just have them around. So as you guys know, I like to really make sure I have the fillets wetted out. What's cool about doing it this way is like, I don't have to worry about accidentally running it down the back of the rocket. We can get pretty heavy handed with the epoxy in here and the centering rings are going to stop it. So that's pretty cool. And then we're just going to start wetting out up the fins. Making sure there's plenty of resin to soak into the cloth. Especially on these beveled edges right here. Careful not to get any drips. Try and get that brush bristle out of there. Sometimes you get a bristle in their fiberglass work and that's just it. It's just there forever and that's fine. It's a little piece of the story. Um, let's see. All right. Step one's done, now we're on to step two. Just make sure we get it down in those fillets. And then lay it up the fin. Pull this one back up a little bit. And lay it up the fin. Now, we're largely going to just try to coax out the epoxy that's already there. And uh, what you'll run into a lot with this is not having a good amount of cloth excess between the sets of fillets. So you can like wind up, uh, when you're pushing them in, into the fillets, you'll pull the cloth off the tube. And the remedy to that is to just pull up the piece that's on your fin and then that'll kind of let any extra cloth from the run up the fin to fill that void. And then I 
On the flip side of that, you want to just kind of dab the fin out like this to get the cloth all seated where it needs to be seated. That way you don't pull it up out of the fillet. But you can see with the right amount of epoxy in there, it's a pretty quick job. This fin actually almost entirely wet itself out just from having enough, uh, probably what some would call too much epoxy, which is easily remediable, remediable with peel ply, but I'm not using any. I'm not after any gargantuan weight savings in this particular build. It's not, uh, it's not gonna hurt the way I sleep at night if it comes out a little heavy. But what I am gonna do is make sure I have enough epoxy around all the edges and especially you want to be very careful so you don't pull the cloth out of alignment but you want to make sure you have the epoxy wrapped around the edge if you have beveled edges. The back you can just square it up no problem but you want to make sure your brush is wetted out and you can kind of almost pulled down at a very very minute angle to make sure that you have the cloth properly adhering to the bevel shape on that guy. It's a little dirty but that's fine. Lay it up from the middle. And we'll probably try to do it. Yeah there you go. Mm, I was afraid of that. I'm really hoping it wouldn't uh, take that wrinkle and move it up the fin, but that's what it wants to do. Maybe we can, yeah, there you go, there's a nice compromise. Wrinkle it in the side, or the part that no one will ever see, and I don't have to sand in that case. So, make sure we're all wetted out and nice. Make sure the epoxy under the mylar is smooth. That really makes me want to do like a really nice stain on some wood fins and then glass over it and just polish it up like you would carbon fiber. That would be super, super cool to get it all smooth and nice. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning into a Rocky Vlogs. I want to extend a special thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. Those are the names you see scrolling across the screen right now. If you want to help support the channel, you can check out either one of those. You can join the channel right here on YouTube or you can click the link in my description to see the Patreon. And you can check out all the things I used in this video on Amazon as well. I I'm now an Amazon affiliate, so if you buy stuff through my links, I get a little bit of kickback, so you're helping the channel out while you buy yourself some rocket supplies, so that's really cool. And finally, my Thunderstruck version of the APCP merch is here. We got sweatshirts, we got long sleeve shirts, and we got, by popular demand, the pint beer glasses have returned, so please go check those out at rocketvlogs.com, and I have some more designs coming out for springtime, and um, the dogs are barking in the background. Really appreciate you guys' patience. I know it's winter. It's just like, you know, there's so many rockets to build, but I'm getting pretty burnt out on just building and building and building. I want to fly rockets really bad. Fortunately, we are only six weeks out from Cloudburst where we're flying the 12-inch Punisher again. If you don't know about the 12-inch Punisher, you can check out the whole build series on that massive rocket up in the top right corner. And uh, yeah, we're lighting all seven motors this time. That thing's going almost 10,000 feet and almost mock, which is crazy because it weighs 200 pounds. If you aren't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. My goal is to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If I do reach that goal, I'm giving away a seven and a half inch diameter Patriot kit that is a level three size rocket. And I would love for somebody to use it to get their level three certification. For now, my name is Braden. This is Rocket Vlogs, and I'll see you in the next video.